Module 6, Aruba Instant Arm. In this module we'll do an arm introduction. We'll look at how arm scans and the arm indices for changing channels. We'll look at band steering, airtime fairness. We'll look at client match. This will be just an introduction. The RF neighborhood that client match needs. And we'll look at some support commands. ARM allows the IEPs to continuously scan the RF spectrum for the best channel and power levels. They also scan for interference and intrusion detection. This information is then returned to the VC. Other features of ARMS are voice aware. This stops the IP from scanning for other channels if there's an active voice call. Client aware stops the IP changing channels while clients are associated. The load aware scanning feature dynamically adjusts scanning behavior when the IP exceeds a utilization threshold. The IP will resume scanning when it is below the threshold. Band steering will assist the 5 GHz capable clients to use the 5 GHz radio and not the 2.4 GHz radio. Airtime fairness adjusts the access to the IPs by various users. ARM will scan the RF band and automatically assign the best channel and power settings for all the IPs in the network. ARM will adapt to any changes in the RF environment. An IP will spend 10 seconds on its designated channel. It will then switch to the next channel for 110 milliseconds. The IP returns to its designated channel for another 10 seconds and then again switches to another channel for 110 milliseconds. This is a continuous function of ARM. LoadAware scanning feature dynamically adjusts scanning behavior to maintain an uninterrupted data transfer when the network traffic exceeds a predefined threshold. The IPs will resume complete monitoring scan when the traffic drops to a normal level. The interference index is populated by co-channel information. This information is collected on the IP's present channel and adjacent channels. This information is also collected on all other valid channels. By comparing the index between the co-channel interference and adjacent channel interference, the AP can make the decision to change to a better adjacent channel. To limit fluctuation, the better channel must be superior through eight complete scans before the IP can change channels. The IP can also choose to update its power selection if the co-channel does not detect interference from other valid IPs on the same channel. If the client aware option is enabled, the AP does not change channels if there is an active client associated to that IP. Voice aware would also not allow the IPs to scan other channels if a voice call was in progress. If an IP detects high levels of MAC errors or physical errors, then the IP will change channels immediately. In this example, ARM has calibrated the IPs. Note that IP 9C changed from channel 1 to channel 11 with less interference. Band steering is another feature of ARM. This feature moves dual band capable clients to stay on the 5 GHz band, reduces code channel interference and increases available bandwidth for dual band clients because there are more channels on the 5 GHz band than on the 2.4 GHz band. An administrator can select three types of operating mode. Prefer 5 GHz, where the system will attempt to move 5 GHz capable clients to the 5 GHz side but will allow the clients to join the IPs on the 2.4 GHz side as needed. Force 5 GHz will force 5 GHz capable clients to the 5 GHz side with no exceptions. Balance Band tries to balance the clients across the two radios in order to best utilize the available 2.4 and 5 GHz band. Airtime Fairness Mode provides equal access to all clients on the wireless medium regardless of the client type, capability, or operating system. This allows the delivery of uniform performance to all clients. 
This feature prevents some clients from monopolizing resources at the expense of other clients. Airtime fairness consists of three modes of operation. Default access disables airtime allocation and provides access based on the client's request. Fair access allocates airtime evenly across all clients. Preferred access allocates airtime to all clients but shows preference to higher performing clients. The RF tab gives you the configuration for band steering mode and airtime fairness mode. Under access points, you have the following options. Specify the minimum and maximum power levels. Enable the client aware feature, which means the IP will not change channels when a client is associated. Wide channel bands. This is for channels bonding, four megahertz channels. Typically, you only want to do this on the five gigahertz band and 80 megahertz support for AC APs. From the support window, the command AP arm history was issued. Here we can see the history of IEP 93C. On the 5 GHz band, the IP went from its maximum power level down to 24. On the 2.4 GHz band, the IP first reduced its power, then it also changed channels from 1 to 11 and then went back and forth between the channels due to interference while trying to stabilize with other IPs. The show AP arm neighbors command enables you to see all the interfering APs from other networks. In this case, CASA 1 has a strong signal to noise ratio, but the other APs are not that strong. There are other arm commands, but the intricacies of these commands are beyond the scope of this course. Client match has many features to improve your IAP experience. These include the following. Continuously monitors client's RF neighborhood to provide client IP reassignment to improve performance. Dynamic load balancing balances clients across IPs on different channels based on the IP load. Sticky clients helps clients that tend to stay associated to an AP despite the low signal levels. Band steering, the IPs monitor the RSSI for the client and advertises a dual band capability and will move the client to the 5 GHz radio. Channel utilization, clients are steered from busy channels to idle channels based on utilization. Client capacity match, clients are not steered to the appropriate channel, for example HT20, HT40 or VHT80 AC, and these are based on the client's capability. If client match is enabled, then armband steering and load balancing are superseded. No client software is needed for client match to work. The client RF neighborhood process consists of the following steps. IEPs continuously monitor the client RF neighborhood and collects information about clients. The IEPs broadcast this information to the cluster. The IEP cluster calculates client RF neighborhood and determines candidates IEPs for the client. The IP sends the client steer request. The IP decides to steer the client to one of the IPs in the RF neighborhood because the client is sticky or 5 GHz capable. The IP has too many clients compared to other IPs. The current channel is highly utilized, thus other channels would be better for the client. Other IP have the end bonding and a better capacity match for this client. IP send the client steer request, identifies and manages the client relocation. Here is an example of an IP before and after the client match process. Note that the change to the IP. Prior to client match, one IP had 20 clients. Once client match was enabled, the clients were distributed over various IPs. The virtual beacon command reports on clients and which IPs can see the clients with a reasonable signal. You can see triggered events and if it was successful. There are also other client match commands you can use. The command client match action displays a table with the client match states. 
Normal, the client is working well on this IP. Home, the home IP found a better IP for the client. Deny, the IP denied the client since it has not been designated as the better IP for this client. Target, the current IP is the best IP for this client. Voice, if it's a voice client and voice is active, then the client cannot be moved. Refused. If there are too many clients attempting to associate to an IP, it will refuse clients and encourage them to move to other IPs. Done indicates that the current IP has sent a DAUTH to the client to try to move the client to another better IP. Adopted the client has moved successfully to another IP. Failed indicates the attempt to move the client have failed. You can select to view the client match that has happened on the 2.4 or 5 GHz radio. The red dot represents devices associated to your IP. The devices are seen at various levels of RSSI strength. You can roam your mouse over the red dot and get information on the client match history. Here we see that the IP believes it is not the best IP for this device, but that the client match failed we see the home AP and the target AP. The blue lines represent the number of devices that the IAP can see but are unassociated devices. The devices are seen at various levels of RSSI strength. You can roam your mouse over the blue line and get basic radio station layout to see the specific devices in this band and their specific SSID strength. You can further click on one of the blue dots representing a device and get its MAC address and RSSI strength. RF optimization features used in dense and high interference areas. In the wireless setting tab there is a feature named broadcast filtering with the following features. All. The AP drops all broadcast and multicast frames except DHCP and ARP. This is recommended in dense IP deployments with high interference environments. ARP, in addition to dropping all broadcast and multicast frames, except DHCP and ARP, the APs convert ARP requests to unicast and send these packets to the associated client. This is recommended in sparse IP deployments with data only scenarios. Disable, all broadcast and multicast traffic is forwarded by default. Note, in most scenarios, Aruba recommends that you set the broadcast filtering to the ARP. However, if you run multicast applications on the network, disable broadcast filtering to prevent multicast traffic from being dropped from the wireless LAN. MTO, Multicast Transmission Optimization, disabled by default. If you enable the multicast optimization, the IP selects the optimal rate for sending broadcast and multicast frames based on the lowest transmission rate that is indicated by the rate adaption state of each associated client. Aruba recommends enabling this normally. DMO, Dynamic Multicast Optimization, disabled by default. The 802.11 standard states that multicast traffic over the wireless LAN must be transmitted at the lowest supported rate so that all clients can decode it. The low transmission rate results in increased airtime utilization and therefore decreases overall throughput for transmissions. Due to the slower speeds, it is desirable to transform multicast traffic to unicast traffic with a few clients that have subscribed to a multicast stream. Transforming multicast traffic to unicast traffic increases the speed of wireless transmission by using the higher unicast rates. This is recommended for voice and video deployments. Interference Immunity Level If an IP attempts to decode a non-802.11 signal, its ability to receive traffic can be interrupted momentarily. The noise immunity feature can help to improve the network performance in environments with high levels of non-802.11 noise from devices such as Bluetooth headsets, video monitors, cordless phones. You can configure the noise immunity feature from level 0 to 5. 
Increasing the immunity level makes the IP slightly deaf to its surroundings, meaning it causes the range of the IP to decrease slightly. The default recommendation for the immunity level for most deployments is level 2. Local probe request threshold. A station trying to join any wireless LAN can search for available wireless networks by performing an active scan or a passive scan. During a passive scan, the client listens to beacon frames that are sent by the AP on every possible channel to discover the available wireless networks. The station must wait until it can detect a beacon from the AP. During an active scan, the client sends a probe request to detect the presence of an AP on a channel. An AP that detects a probe request must respond with a probe response. The probe response provides the client with all the required information about the network that is broadcasted by this AP. In the dense environment, some clients might join an AP with a lower signal-to-noise ratio, even in the presence of APs with a better signal-to-noise ratio. The local probe threshold feature defines the signal-to-noise ratio value below which the AP ignores the incoming probe request. As a result, the client gets a probe response only from APs that have a good signal-to-noise ratio. This feature encourages proper roaming in dense deployments. The supported range for signal-to-noise ratio value is 0 to 100 dBs, and a value of 0 disables this feature. Aruba recommends that you enable this feature in dense environments with a value set to 25 dBs. In this module, we had an introduction to ARM, how ARM scans, the ARM indices for choosing the best power and channels, the band steering and airtime fairness. We did an introduction to client match. We looked at the RF neighborhood that client match creates, and we saw some supported commands. Thank you.